Hey guys, this is Ricardo and I'm back here on the Watch With Us YouTube channel. And in for review this week, we have the Pelion from the micro brand Atticus. Now Atticus is a micro brand that's run by the husband and wife team of Rusty and Dee Dee. For you that are familiar with the micro brand community, you'll know that Rusty is the 3D designer and renderer for the well-known micro brand NTH. Now NTH it's known for its thin divers. Um, it's run by Chris Doc Vale and the quality on those divers and the value for money are huge when it comes to the micro brand community. Um, everyone knows that when you get an NTH you're getting a quality watch. So Going back to Rusty, Rusty's been with NTH for a couple of years now, and he wanted to create a more go anywhere, do anything watch. And he kind of wanted to get away from the whole diver styled watches. So, as I said, he teamed up with his wife, and they're going to be doing an initial release of five watches in a series called the Adventure Series. And of course, one of those five watches we have here is the Pelion. Now, join me as I go through some of the specs on this watch and some of the style points uh, that Rusty and DD took and incorporated into the Pelion. I'll be back after the break. Now, looking at the Pelion, we get a 38 millimeter case, lug to lug here of 46 millimeters. Thickness comes in at 11 millimeters. We get drilled lug holes on this case. In terms of finishing, we have a polished bezel, polished edges here at the bottom here and same thing here on the sides brushing here at the tops of the lugs and brushing here at the sides we have a signed crown which contains blue loom in the logo screw down crown which gives you a hundred meters of water resistance Inside this case, we have ticking a Myota 9015 movement. Going from the case, we'll now extend to the bracelet. You get a 20 millimeter lug width. So your bracelet starts here at 20 millimeters and tapers down to 16 here at the clasp. The clasp is signed Atticus and it's a double locking clasp. One, two. In terms of your bracelet, you have screwed links, as you can see right here. Going to the case back, simple case back, we have here automatic 316L steel, sapphire, and Myota. 9000. Going back to the front of the watch, we have a matte black dial with snowflake hands and a mixture of box, triangular, and rectangular indices. And those are very reminiscent of the old. Tudor Submariners. We have Atticus here at 12, Pelion Automatic at 6, and right below that we have the date, which is a nice white on black. This watch actually comes in two versions, a no date version, which has the appropriate no date movement myota movement inside so no ghost clicks and this date version main difference being in terms of aesthetics 
where you would see the six, instead you would just have the index here extend up in a rectangular fashion, much in the same way as the nine and three index do. 100 meters of water resistance in this case, if I haven't already mentioned that. Loom we have is C3, green loom here on the dial. Here's some more looks. Articulation of the bracelet. Here on the class, we have a total of six micro adjustments. Now I am a seven and a quarter inch wrist and I actually didn't remove any links on this watch when I first received it. All I did was just move the micro adjustments from here at the end to the second hole here. But that covers all these specs on the Pelion. So with that being said, let's jump into my thoughts and pricing on this watch. Now, the word Atticus is ancient Greek for both classic and elegant. And there are many classic style points that this brand has taken when it comes to this watch. Of course, we're all familiar with the snowflake hands, even the indexes here, the snowflake indexes, very familiar to us. But what I appreciate with this watch is that it gives us something and it doesn't exactly mirror anything out there. So in terms of the styling, um, what comes to mind, the closest thing I could think of is either your Black Bay 41 or your 36. But what I like here is that they deviate from copying those models and they give us something different. So first they give us a 38, which I always felt that Tudor should have given us between the 36 and 41. So I appreciate what Atticus has done here. Another thing is they give us a date on this model. I know I'm not the only person out there that wishes that Tudor provided a date on their watches as well. So immediately, though I know some people will look at this and the first thing they'll say is, oh my gosh, it looks like a Tudor. You can't point to any specific tutor and say, oh, it looks like that tutor. And until tutor gives us what many of us want, this is a great option for that type of styling, but still containing some of the features that we, that many of us actually want in the watch. So as I stated, I really love the 38 millimeter sizing. And you know what, let me toss this on the wrist so you guys see how it looks on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. So as you can see here, the watch is a perfect fit on my wrist. That nice 46 millimeter lug to lug with the 38 millimeter case. Um, I'm pretty much realizing that, you know what, 38 is the new 41 for me. It is that perfect style in every watch that I've tried out. Uh, I mean, I'm kind of leaning away from the bigger watches. And I have to say, when I say bigger, I mean anything above like a 43. Um, 43 for me is still, I still like a 43. But really, I've been leaning towards the 38s because I just think they, they provide that perfect classic um, styling as well as a nice look on my wrist. So, of course, that being said, you know, great in terms of the size. So I really like that about this watch. Um, I have to say there is one negative for this watch for me. And I know some people might think of this and say, oh, well, Ricardo, I don't know. But for me, it's the choice in terms of loom. 
I think with this matte black dial, um, I think had they gone with a white loom, I think it would have worked better than with this really green, green loom. Because the thing is, even when it's not loomed up, um, and basically, even when you know it, you're you're not in a darker area, there's still this greenish tint on the loom. And I think overall for the aesthetic, I think it would have looked much better if it was just pure white loom, even if it wasn't as strong. And I'm telling you guys, the loom on this is hella strong. Um, it's very, very bright. Um, I'll drop a couple pictures in here of just the loom. It is extremely bright on this. I mean, you can see this thing from across the room and it lasts quite a bit of time. So in terms of the strength of the loom, I have no problem with it. But even if I lost a little bit in terms of strength and this was an all white loom, I think I might be a happier camper. Now, overall, I just think that this is a great, affordable, go anywhere, do anything option. If you're out there and you're looking for maybe a sub 1K watch that just has a great fit, great quality, nice thinness, nice size, and it has some of these styling points that I mentioned, I think this is a great option for you. S saying that, um, I actually have to tell you guys what the price on this is. Now, in terms of pre-order, I have to note that this watch isn't out for purchase yet. It's gonna be out for purchase in January. In terms of pre-order, this watch is gonna come anywhere between $400 and $500 they're still making their last decision in terms of where exactly that's gonna line up, but I was told the range is between four and 500. I think at that pre-order price, you have a pretty good option in terms of a go anywhere, do anything watch here. Um, as I said, styling points are really, if you're that snowflake type of guy and, and there are some things on the tutors you just, you wanted but you never got, I mean, this is a great affordable option, very comfortable to wear. You don't have to worry about wearing it in water. Um, nice screw down crown, 100 meters of water resistance. I think overall, this is a great option out there and definitely um, worth your time and worth looking at. Um, but that's gonna complete it for my review on the Pelion. If you guys have any questions, definitely place them down there in the comment section. Uh, if you guys are also interested in maybe doing the pre-order for the Pelion, I'm gonna make sure once uh, Rusty and Dee Dee let me know, I'll drop it on the Instagram page so you guys ex know exactly when these will go on sale for pre-order. But, uh, as I said, if you're looking for this type of watch, this type of styling, and you're looking for something affordable that won't absolutely destroy your pocket, um, I think this is a great option out there. But that completes it for my review, guys. I hope you enjoyed the review, and I'll see you next week with the next review on the channel. Thank you, and bye.